Let's talk about logistic regression, which is one of the most widely used linear model for classification problems. Even though the name of this model has the word regression in it, it's not a model for regression problems. It's a model for classification problems. Similar to linear regression, logistic regression learns weights or coefficients associated with each feature and the bias term. In case of linear regression, how do we calculate predictions? Given a new example, we calculate this weighted sum of the feature values of this new example. We add the bias term to it, and that's our prediction for the new example. Can we use the same score, the same idea for classification problems? Not exactly, right? In classification problems, we are interested in these hard predictions. In case of sentiment analysis, we want to predict whether a given movie review is positive or negative. Or in spam identification, we want to predict whether a given email is spam or not spam. So how can we use this same idea, this same score for classification problems? The idea is to apply a threshold on this raw prediction score. For example, we can say something like, if the score is greater than or equal to zero, then predict positive. If it is less than zero, predict negative. So that's the overall idea of logistic regression or any linear classifier. The idea is that similar to linear regression, we calculate this prediction score using learned coefficients and the bias term, and we apply a threshold on it. At this point, we are going to focus on how predict and predict proba works for logistic regression and how can we use loan coefficients to interpret the model. We are not really going to talk about how it learns these coefficients and the bias term. Let's start with a motivating example. Consider the problem of predicting sentiment expressed in movie reviews. Here are some sample reviews. The first review, for example, says this movie was excellent. The performances were Oscar worthy. It's an example of a positive movie review. The second review, on the other hand, what a boring movie. I almost fell asleep twice while watching it is an example of a negative movie review. So we have a binary classification problem. We have two targets, positive or negative. What are the features? Our reviews, that is our data, comes in raw text format. So we need to encode this data in some way. If we apply bag of words representation, then our features are going to be unique words from the vocabulary. Now imagine that you have many such reviews and you train a logistic regression model on this data set. You only consider seven words from your vocabulary and these are the corresponding coefficients for these features learned by your model. What do we see? The words excellent, flawless, and subtle have positive coefficients, whereas the words disappointment, boring, unwatchable, incoherent have negative coefficients. Now using this information, how do we make predictions? For now, just ignore the bias term or imagine that the model has learned the bias of zero. Okay, now this is our new review. It got a bit boring at times, but the direction was excellent and the acting was flawless. How do we make prediction for this new movie review? First, we need to encode this movie review. We have seven words here in our vocabulary. So our feature vector is going to have seven elements in it. And from our vocabulary, we have these words, boring, excellent, flawless, which occur in this review. So I have one for these words and zero everywhere else. That's our feature vector for this movie review. Now, how do we make prediction for this movie review? For the feature vector, we calculate this score similar to linear regression. So we have these three words, boring, excellent, and flawless in our review, and the corresponding feature values are one. So what do we do? We take coefficient of the word boring and the feature value for the word boring is one. So uh, the coefficient for boring is minus 
this is our first term then the second term is coefficient of excellent which is 1.93 and the feature value for excellent is again 1 and our third term is coefficient of flawless which is 1.43 and the feature value again is 1. So if we add these three things together we get 1.96. If we were doing linear regression, then this would have been our prediction. But right now we are interested in classification. So we apply a threshold. We compare this value with zero. Since this value is greater than zero, we predict the movie review as positive. Here I'm showing you the same thing in this graphical format. We have these three features, boring equal to one, excellent equal to one, and flawless equal to one. And these are the weights corresponding to each of these features. How are we calculating the prediction? We are multiplying feature value by weight. We are adding these three things together. And our score 1.96 is greater than zero. And that's why we are predicting positive sentiment. So what's happening here? The model has learned a coefficient associated with each word or each feature from your data. Some of these coefficients are going to be positive and some of them are going to be negative. Now, given a new movie review, it's going to have some words with positive coefficients and some words with negative coefficients. Words with positive coefficient are going to pull the prediction towards positive sentiment and words with negative coefficients are going to pull the prediction towards negative sentiment. And if the words with positive coefficient win, then your overall sentiment is going to be positive. Otherwise, it's going to be negative. So if this weight would have been of a bigger magnitude, say minus four, then the summation would have been negative and it would have been less than zero and the prediction would have been negative in that case. So a linear classifier is a linear function of the input x followed by a threshold. What are the main components of a linear classifier? There are four main components. The first component is input features x1 to xt. The second component is the learned coefficients or weight w1 to wd the third component is this bias and the fourth component is the threshold r in the toy example we saw before we assume that both bias and our threshold are zero let's try logistic regression on our cities data i'm using cities data for easy visualization so just to remind you, in the city's data, we have two features, longitude and latitude, and the target is country. This is a binary classification problem, and we have two target values here, Canada and USA. And the task is to predict the country given longitude and latitude information. Let's first try dummy classifier on this data set. We have train scores and validation scores. Now, let's try logistic regression. You can import logistic regression from sklearn.linear model. Now I'm creating logistic regression object. I'm passing it to cross-validate, and here are our cross-validation results. What do we see here? Our validation scores and train scores are much better compared to dummy classifier, which is good. That said, we see a lot of variation in the validation scores. For example, for this particular fold, the score is quite low, whereas for this last fold, the score is quite high. So these results might not be that reliable, but that's okay. That's not the main point right now. Now let's try to access the loan parameters. Remember that logistic regression learns weights and the bias. How do we access these two parameters? Similar to rich, we can access learned weights using this coef underscore attribute and learned bias using this intercept underscore attribute. So let's try that. Again, this is our logistic regression model. 
I am uh, fitting it again because when you carry out cross validation, it doesn't actually return a fit model. So I'm fitting it again. And these are our model weights. These are our learned coefficients. And this is our intercept, that is our bias term. So for each feature from our data set, it has learned coefficients. For both longitude and latitude, the learned coefficients are negative. But we see that the weight or coefficient of latitude is larger in magnitude. And this kind of makes sense, right? Canada as a country lies above the USA and we expect that latitude values will contribute more in prediction than longitude because longitude is not really going to change much in this case, but latitude is going to contribute more. Now, how do we make predictions using these loan parameters? We have learned weights and we have learned the intercept. Now, given a new example, this is our example. How do we make prediction for this example? These are the feature values for this example. And using these feature values, we can calculate the weighted sum of these feature values using loan coefficients. We can add the intercept to it. It will give us a score. Then we will apply our threshold on it to get the prediction. So let's try that. First, I'm calculating this uh, weighted sum of feature values and adding the intercept to it. And this is our score. Now we want to apply a threshold on this score. This score is less than zero and that's why our prediction is going to be negative. Now what's the meaning of negative and positive in this context? We just have these two classes, Canada and USA. So what exactly is positive and what exactly is negative? With logistic regression, the model randomly assigns one of the classes as a positive class and the other one as a negative class. And we can access this information using this uh, model dot classes underscore attribute. So these are our classes and these are just alphabetically ordered classes. And so the first class here is going to be considered negative and the second class is going to be considered positive. So in our case, Canada is going to be our negative class and USA is going to be our positive class. Okay, now based on our score, our score was negative. So our prediction here would be Canada. And let's check whether predict gives us the same class. And yes, it does. When we call predict on our logistic regression object, it gives us Canada as our prediction, which matches the prediction we got before when we calculated this score by taking the weighted sum of the input features we, and adding the intercept to it and applying the threshold. So that's great. We exactly know how the model is calculating predictions. Decision boundary of logistic regression is going to be a hyperplane dividing the feature space in half. So if you have two features, your decision boundary is going to be a one dimensional line. If you have three features, your decision boundary is going to be a two dimensional plane. And if you have D features, then your decision boundary is going to be a D minus one dimensional hyperplane. It's kind of hard to visualize things after three dimensions, but Remember that for logistic regression, if you have D features, your decision boundary is going to be a D minus one dimensional hyperplane. Let's look at an example of decision boundary on our cities data. In this case, we have two features and our decision boundary is going to be one dimensional line. So this is our model. This is dividing our feature space into half. Everything above this line is going to be considered as Canada and everything below this line is going to be considered as USA. If we compare this decision boundary with other classifiers we have seen before, like KNNs or SVMRBFs, the decision boundary is quite simple. In case of SVMRBFs, for example, the decision boundary is quite complex. 
In logistic regression, it's just a straight line. In uh, SVM RBF, it is trying to get these cities from Alaska correct, for example. But it won't be possible with logistic regression. At this point, you might wonder why are we even bothering to learn about logistic regression? It seems very restrictive in that it's learning only these straight lines. This is true in low dimensional space. Right now we are working in two dimensional space. We only have two features. So in low dimensional space, linear models can be restrictive, but they can become quite powerful in high dimensional space. What are the main hyperparameters of logistic regression? The most important hyperparameter of logistic regression is C, which controls the fundamental trade-off. Now at this point, we are not really going to talk about how it controls the fundamental trade-off. We are not ready for it yet. But at a high level, the interpretation of C is similar to the interpretation of C we saw in the context of SVMRBFs. So smaller C might lead to underfitting and bigger C might lead to overfitting. Let's examine this on the city's data set. As usual, I'm sweeping through the C hyperparameter and I'm carrying out cross validation for each value of C and I'm showing you mean train scores and mean cross validation scores for different values of C. And as I said before, for smaller values of C, we are likely to underfit. We see some underfitting here. And for bigger values of C, we are likely to overfit. In this particular case, we don't really see much overfitting, but that's the general pattern you are likely to observe. Okay, so that was a quick introduction to logistic regression.